So uh, I was quite daunted by it. I was attracted to its size, its scale. It's like a play. The music and the words are pretty well connected all the way through. And they are about, it's about people. And I suppose my challenge to myself was how to crack the male and female chorus, which are in two people. So you know that they're people. They're not a, they're not a wall. I also think that period was interesting, 1946, is that you're dealing with a post-war situation, but also something about our revisionism about that time. We're no longer just looking at the period after a war. It's always it's rather good. And I, I found that interesting. So I was drawn to it and scared of it. And treats the proud city as if it were his home. It is an axiom among kings to use a foreign threat to hide local evil. I had a feeling it was about archaeology, about digging up the past. So instead of travelling to Rome, latterly, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could go down to Rome? So that is what we did, was that the, the, that we had just this 1946 world, but this man is sort of digging up his own mind. And if you kind of have a premise that in the end, we are all the same, time is all the same, he's digging up the feeling of another such time. At one moment, the female chorus puts her coat on the rake Lucretia, and something that you could only do in the theater where 2,000 years can just disappear and one person can help another. And somehow, and what I really like to say is that Lucretia says thank you because she doesn't know who she's saying thank you to. This person is 2,000 years ahead. But somehow the audience can hold that. So it's genius because you feel that the opera holds the much greater truth that all time is one. It isn't often she sleeps so well, or ever fretting so collateral. I often wonder whether Lucretia's love is the flower of her. Tarquinius is stupid and young and is very attracted to Lucretia. The, the opera offers you the ambiguity that she too was attracted to him. There is no moral fault in being attracted to him and there's no moral fault in his being attracted to her. Uh, his panther-like walk through the house is where he makes a mistake. I mean, he does a terrible thing, and we we know that even if she is raped, and she is raped, and that's very clear that she runs away from him and he captures her, but that she was collusive in the in the wooing of it, not in the action of it. And this is, I mean, obviously a completely red rag to the bull of our modern times, but. It is not that one justifies it, but that these things can happen. And the consequence of it happening is that she uh, commits suicide, not because she has done a bad thing, but because the best of her life is done, I think. And Colatinus is at fault for having been away so long. 
What is it about Roman society that these men can go away for a year and leave their women spinning or whatever they're doing and longing? And lifts it with slow deliberation to his lips. Good Lord. is also very beautiful because even though it seems to have been written to tag it along and to hold it in what is really a kind of a Christian frame it, it, it doesn't matter is it all, is it all, is it all is just a fantastic is it all, is it all uh, is this all it is a bit like is there any there over there You know, is it all and that question is much bigger than any hope that 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 Christ, who came after Lucretia, redeemed the world. In fact, not in fact, but I, my feeling is that Lucretia is the Christus before Christ. Is that she rendered up her life for something bigger than herself? <laughs> Oh, my God.